Hello friends and welcome back to my channel, A Small Line Books. My name is Kyle Lee and today I have for you my top 8 fiction books of 2022. It's a little late but it's only the 4th day of January so I feel like it's fine, like there's no rush on these things, you know? It's still the point of the year where you can say Happy New Year, so I think it's fine. <laughs> um, so. Um, I'm gonna jump right into the books that I read this year that I really loved or that were really memorable to me. Um, I don't have a top 10 because I couldn't find two more books that I was like, whoa, this was so, 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 so good that it's like a fave. Um, these are books that like I consider like to be faves and I recommend to people and yeah. So I have my stack here of the physical books and there are about five and then the other three were ebooks. So let's start off. With the physical books, some of these books I might have talked about already on this channel, but I will talk about them again because I can't shut up about them, basically. So, the first book that I read and enjoyed and loved, and it's like a favorite, like one of my top 10 of my entire life, <laughs> is The Wine of Astonishment by Earl Lovelace. I cannot shut up about this book, honestly and truly. So basically The Mind of Astonishment was published in 1982 and it follows a spiritual Baptist community which is a indigenous religion to Trinidad and Tobago and it follows this community who have been persecuted against and they are oppressed and they can't um, practice their religion out in the open, they can't worship, it's banned um, and by the colonial government. At the same time there are American troops in Trinidad and that plays another role in this book and you have these uh, four main characters. Um, who all have different ways of achieving liberation and Eva and B. Dorcas are the main characters who are a religious couple and they run a spiritual Baptist church and they are really hoping that this new elected official from their town will change things for their religion and for their community and it does not happen. At the same time you have Bolo, a stick fighting champion who has, who is seen as a hero in his community and he goes to prison, he comes back to the Banas and the community and he kind of starts wrecking havoc across the community and um, becoming a drunk and things like that. And you kind of see how his the challenge he has as he gets more and more frustrated with the presence of the American troops and the fact that his community is being oppressed. You see the different routes that people take to achieve liberation and how it can be very different and everyone wants the same thing but has different paths of getting there. I think this is brilliant. The lyricism of Earl Lovelace I cannot shut up about. It is so good unlike any other and it's just one of those classic Caribbean novels that I will keep with me forever and I will re continue reading this and learning new things as I do. The next book was another reread and it was The Interpreter of Maladies by Jhumpa Lahiri. So I first was introduced to Jhumpa Lahiri in my uh, university education. I forget what class we were taking but she was a recommended, she was assigned um, an assigned reading on syllabus and I read only a couple short stories and I, I absolutely fell in love with her writing and I read it, reread it this year and I just like was consumed by the way she writes and one of my favorite stories in this is when Mr. Prisada comes to dine and it it really it falls it's from a child narrator and I just found it so interesting how she was able to take on the perspective of a child to like talk about a really serious issue which is the partition of India, Pakistan and Bangladesh right the, the, the partition that happened um, during the colonial period and it was just it's just such a good book of short stories that I recommend to anyone who's interested in, in reading short stories this is my favorite short story collection and one of my favorite books so yeah and I will probably reread this all the time because it's that good and it also won the Pulitzer Prize if you're into that kind of thing so the other book I read and right now is sitting at the top of what my favorite books of the year like of my life are and I will reread re -read this someday because it was so good. I spent like, like I think a day in bed just like devouring this, and it is Against the Loveless World by Susan Abu Hawa. Um, this follows Nar, a Palestinian woman who has who is in an Israeli solitary confinement cell and is recounting her life story to us as as the readers and it follows her from childhood to 
adulthood and we see how the things in her life have been shaped by Israeli occupation of Palestine and we see the length she goes to or has to go to for her own freedom and she returns to Palestine as a teenager and is swept up in all these revolutionary ideas and meets revolutionaries and becomes a revolutionary herself and it's really like you see the love of a country in this novel and just the way Abu Hawa writes is so good and the characterization is so good and like I want everyone to read this book like it's so good um I would definitely check out the content warnings before reading this book but I do recommend it to people looking for like an all encapsulation type of novel that really brings you into a story and into a character's life and like I was left after this feeling like book drunk if that's the thing like I was like when am I gonna read a book this good ever again like whenever will that happen so definitely recommend my absolute favorite book for the year 2022 the next book that I read was these ghosts are a family by Maisie Card, and this was my first book club pick and I was put onto this book by Book of Sins and someone from Instagram, I forget who, actually mailed this book to me and it's a signed copy by Miss Maisie Card herself. So that's cool. Um, this is written by a Jamaican American author. Ooh, I'm trying to close the back. Uh, this is written by a Jamaican American author and it's filled with magical realism and I really enjoyed it even though I was confused about the ending. I actually had given this four stars when I read it but now that I've sat with it and it has simmered in my mind I actually really really love it and it's one of my favorite books. Um, and basically it follows uh, a family and basically the patriarch of the family, the man, he has a secret and he, his secret is not a spoiler that he has a secret family <laughs> and he's been lying about who he is and he brings together the women in his family to tell them this and then we kind of take him back in time to his ancestors and we see how the secret has affected the family but the magical realism element is really powerful and it's about ghosts and it's so well done it feels really steeped in Caribbean tradition and if you know, you know about Duppy and Jumbi and all them things, that's really steeped in this book. And just the use of Jamaican patois is really fascinating to me and the way the author decided to use that. And it just felt so real. And I really love it and I recommend it if you're looking for a magical realism piece, but with a Caribbean element to it as well. Okay, and the other book I read was a romance, which is not usual for me. But I read You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akwiki Emezi, um, who is one of my favorite authors. I think they have been putting out un like enough work in the past years. And yeah, I this follows Faye, um, a black woman living in Brooklyn who lost her husband and is grieving and decides that it's time to get back out there and she starts dating a bunch of people, hooking up with a bunch of people and then she goes to the, an unnamed Caribbean island which I think is Tobago to be honest um, based on the way that they speak um, and she goes to this guy to Tobago and then she has a love story that I don't want to spoil the twist because there is a twist uh, that makes the book so juicy and you're just like what is going on? Like that's how I was the whole time like what? 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 I, that's how I was the whole time reading the book. I was like, stress, literally stressed out by this book, but so good, so juicy, and so messy. But I also love that this romance book dealt with what it means to grieve and how we act in our grief. And also, it's spicy, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit spicy. But I just think it's interesting the reaction to this book. Uh, I really liked it. Some people really hated it. I think it's just like interesting to see the controversy around that. Um, but when I read this, I like devoured it, like stayed up all night type thing. So the next book that I loved is The House of Spirits by Isabel Allende. It was another book club read for me, and it was a um, my it was my first Isabel Allende read ever, and I've always wanted to read her books because I love magical realism. Uh, it's something that I live for. Like I just love it. Like I yeah, so good. Um, and it follows a family 
um, in Ch Chile, I believe, and it kind of goes through their entire family history and their lives. And um, the magic realism element is actually very interesting to me. Like it wasn't like in your face, but it was like really like interwoven into the narrative. And basically, um, it starts like very far from like the end. Like, I feel like. Um, and I, I'm like trying to jog my brain about what I love so much about this book but it does follow women in this family and how they deal with the abuse and and how they deal with from from the patriarch and um, it talks about revolution and I mean I feel like I'm not doing it justice but it was a really good book and it was really really well written and I absolutely loved it. The other book that I really loved was Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney this book really sent me in a dark place, which is like funny that I love it, but it really had an emotional impact on me. And it follows these two friends who are in university and they meet this wealthy couple and they start hanging out with them. And one of the friends starts a affair with an affair with um, one of the one of the friends starts an affair with the man. Um, the husband and she's going through all these things and like having like a really hard time with her friendship and her health and her family and there's like class elements and like the infidelity piece is really interesting to me and I just like felt really wrecked by it because I felt so connected to the character who was like kind of going through it about this married man like I'm okay not like I related super seriously like in that way but but um, I just related to like feeling really lost in life and just feeling like almost sick over heartbreak or over somebody else. So it had a really lasting impact on me and Sally Rooney is a genius. Like I don't care what nobody says. I don't care if I get called basic. I don't care whatever. I, I, I believe in Sally Rooney's supremacy. Like I read all her books this year and I really liked all of them. I didn't love like to the extent that I love this one all of them but I really enjoyed her writing style and like the topics that she writes about so that's why it made my list and the next book that I read was The Bread the Devil Need by Lisa Allen Agostini and this is another read Caribbean piece and it was really depressing really dark and deep and really impactful to me and it follows the life of a woman living in Trinidad and she is she comes she starts coming to terms with her own life and her own um situation surrounding domestic violence after witnessing someone um a woman be killed by her uh, uh, lover her ex-lover or maybe it was her lover uh, i think serious content warnings for this one uh, it was really triggering it was really hard to read at times um but so so well written and just like it was written in the way that Trinidadians speak, which I love. Um, but it was such a good piece of literature and it will stay with me forever. And I, it's hard to recommend it to people because it's so triggering and it has so many th things going on. Um, so please check out the content warnings for this one um, if you are interested in reading it. Um, but I definitely think that it was well deserved to be shortlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction um, and I hope to see more from this author. That is my top 8 books of 2022. Um, I hope to have maybe a top 10 at the end of this year because it just feels more like even to have a top 10. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and also you can follow me on Goodreads or Storygraph or at my Instagram page at Small Online Books. Uh, I'll have those all linked down below in the bio so you can um, connect with me and we can become friends, internet friends. Um, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Thanks for liming with me. Bye!